Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in The Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by a guy who's, oh, holy light, the thing was something, something, Gary Butterfield. Hey, the thing is something, something. I like to think so. A little something, something is something I, I said for a little while. <laughs> yeah, what happened? A little something. I just, I just went away. <laughs> yeah. That's how words work, <laughs> You switched you know? over to Lanyape. I just switched over to, I, I, I still bring up Lanyap though. Uh, every once in a while I'll drop that into just everyday conversation. Yeah, I feel like a lot of, like, it's the same way that anyone I'm talking to who thinks I'm funny, uh, but has never read Akewood, and if they ever read Akewood, they'll find out that I'm just saying Akewood things. Yeah. yeah. And that's like Speaking, you and Gabriel Knight. It's, yeah, exactly. Or, like, uh, Cole Ross and You Look Nice Today. Yeah, shit. Yeah, there's a lot of You Look yeah. Nice Today in my vocabulary, too. Yeah. And I just, I never know it. Every once in a while, like, uh, we, we, me and him have largely got past this in our decade of working together. Just, yeah, this but, is the airing of cold. <laughs> I just, I don't know how it happened. I'm not mad at him or anything. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> convincing. But he, uh, he, uh, uh, early on, like maybe like year two or so, he would say something that I would think was really funny. And then like later find out <laughs> it was a, you look nice today thing. And then eventually he started disclaiming and then like, you know, everything was fine or just be like, Oh, that's not mine. Like we both started being like, Oh, that's not mine. When, yeah. when we were just taking something. You were like, God, it's so funny when he has John Hodgman say awkward cake. Yeah. That was one of the big ones, you know? Ah, ah. is there a person who's f- like face fits their career path more than John Hodgman? Um, like he's got an odd shape of face and skull, and I just think I can't imagine him doing anything other than like the general raconteuritude that John Hodgman does. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 right on. Like, uh, you know, he's written books about how weird his life and career has been. Like, literally, uh, he went on the Daily Show to promote his book, and was funny enough that he became briefly an international star. Yeah, yeah. He's got a he's got an interesting career. Guy's got a real semi charmed kind of life. Baby, baby, but also baby. a lot of sad things. I've read all his books. They they yeah. they're kind of somber. Yeah, somber comedy. Yeah. Uh, there's oh. a whole section in his latest one about how he considers Paul F. Tompkins and his wife like his adopted parents. Aw, it's sweet. That's very sweet. There's, there's a, all of our greatest comedians are extremely sad. You can trust somebody who's funny who's happy. What about that Pete Davidson? He seems like he's got it together. <laughs> he definitely doesn't. What do you mean, Gary? <laughs> what have, what have I he seems like he looks like like a, a Muppet conception of a junkie. <laughs> <laughs> he's like if they, they pulled him off the Avenue Q pile. Yeah, if they, if, they, if they were trying to make a new Muppet that was a junkie, it would look exactly like Pete Davidson. Uh, if like, Pete Davidson has died in the two weeks between us recording this and releasing this, especially of an overdose, <laughs> uh, especially that I'm sorry, uh, we're recording this uh, the 15th of June, Pocket's birthday, and as <laughs> far as I know, our Pete Davidson account is one out of one. Oh, just if something terrible happens at a King of Staten, I- God, what if Pete Davidson <laughs> got 9/11? Because his dad died on 9/11. I'm just trying to think of a plane crashing into Pete Davidson. <laughs> Yeah, is how I'm imagining that, like him having lunch and it's like, oh shit. And then just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got that image going. Yeah. No, we've, uh, we're doing due diligence here. I don't like that guy that much. Oh, I don't, I, 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 no, I, I don't think he's, uh, I, I think he can be funny, but like anytime you watch an SNL sketch in, like he fucking, he does his damnedest to ruin Diner Lobster. Yeah. That's how I feel is he, I feel like there's not enough like anonymous energy to him. To, to like do a sketch and not just be like the weird center of it in a way that doesn't actually work. And it's funny because like last week when we recorded, we talked about, uh, you like a deduce. Mm-hmm. You know, remember, um, I watched that sketch again and Adam Sandler's in it, who is obviously the big breakout of the time, but he also doesn't like immediately jump into the middle of the screen and be like, I like a deduce. Look at my weird eyes. Yeah. Adam you know, Sandler, like, like back in the day was willing to be just like the weird background character of a sketch. Yeah. Yeah, whereas I feel like Pete Davidson doesn't really have that, you know? I mean, I think it comes from being a stand-up before he was a a sketch guy. Yeah, that could definitely be. Like, he's all persona. Anyway, King of Staten Island, not in theaters. 
Yeah, it's the opposite of the Mark McKinney problem on Saturday Night Live. Ah, uh, Mark McKinney. Yeah, he tried. Um, we're talking about Holy Light. Uh, worst uh, kid goes on worst sketch show. <laughs> the, the, uh, everyone who has seen his stuff that's after uh, his SNL run says he's actually incredibly good in that stuff. But I haven't watched like Superstore or whatever. I'm not going to so watch Superstore, Gary. Even yeah. I, Gary, that's that's even I'm not going to watch it. Take, and I watch anything. <laughs> oh, I, 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 yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Real quick, um, the kids in the hall. Oh, uh, my number one's Bruce McCullough. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am probably, uh, Dave Foley, Kevin McDonald. Um, and then, uh, uh, the other guy, Scott, <laughs> Buddy Cole, Scott, and then, uh, Mark McKinney. That is also my ranking. No, oh, I thought maybe you'd have Kevin McDonald higher, but I like Kevin McDonald a lot, but he's definitely a, uh, he's the Eric Idol there. Yeah. Yeah. And Bruce, I, I love Bruce McCullough. Uh, I consider him to be the, I don't know if this is textually true. I think it is, but the one who's responsible for all of the, like, what if we made a really uncomfortable, not that funny short film? Yeah. Uh, stuff, which I love in Kids in the Hall. So. Director of Stealing Harvard, Bruce McCullough. Yeah. Yeah. A storied Hollywood career, uh, along with the wrong guys, Dave Foley. Um, yeah. Oh boy. Holy light. This is good. Could be better. It could be better. I generally think it's pretty good. Could be better. Could be better. I generally think it's pretty good. It's, but it could be better. Pretty good. But I generally think it could be better. But it's pretty good. Mm, could be better, but generally pretty good. But now that I think about it, could be better. Could be better. Generally. But pretty good. Could be better. Pretty good. Better. Good. Better. Good. 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 What's up? I can't do the voice. I can't no, do the voice Gary, I was, <laughs> Gary, no, I wasn't asking you to do the voice. <laughs> We've still got five episodes to record. Uh, um, this gives you a chance of creating a crack the sky laser when you hit an enemy, uh, which does four times your damage and can hit multiple enemies. Yeah, uh, it's it's okay. Yeah. Uh, you get a 50% chance of doing it at nine luck, which, which is nine pretty, luck is achievable, yeah. you know, but, and getting, you know, five luck or whatever is, is pretty easy peasy. Um, and I find the, the thing that this does for me is hit multiple enemies. So I find when I use this, uh, it is good because I will shoot into a cluster of enemies and when it fires, it kills all of them at once, basically. I feel like it misses a lot. Are you sure you're not thinking of just normal crack the sky, which Maybe. misses all no, the No, I'm time? saying, like, I feel like the beam often, like, generates, like, slightly off from the enemy. Hmm. I've had pretty good luck with that. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably misremembering, Gary. I'm not smart. Well, that is, I think it's separate, separate than smart. Okay. Like, memory? I was just kind of confessing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know. Um, It is the, certainly better uh, than crack the sky. Yeah, yeah, way better than crack the sky. Like most of the items, if you put them in a tier form, they're better than like something that does it once. Well, yeah, because you can do the tier thing as many times as you want, and it's free. Yeah, yeah crying is free. Uh, it makes Isaac's eyes look real cool. Yeah, he gets yeah. those glowing yeah. blue or a cyan really s- eyes, s- scary cyan eyes. Yeah, like a like the most tearful and heartfelt character in Final Fantasy VI. Uh, Interceptor? Huh? Interceptor? Interceptor is not that sad. Interceptor Inter- had a good time. It, no, you know, Interceptor has to watch his, 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 you know, his master die. If you let his master die. No, his master always dies. Isn't there like a scene that can show where he survives? No, Shadow dies at the end of Final Fantasy VI. Maybe I'm misremembering. Even if you, sa- even sad- if you save him, he stays behind in the tower to die. Oh, yeah. The other, the other sad thing that can happen. Spoilers! Is that you- you can do that thing where you accidentally uh, swap Interceptor with that status swap spell and give Interceptor to an enemy and then leave. And it's like, now that's your owner, <laughs> which is a really fucked up thing that can happen to Interceptor. I did not know that can happen. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. You're Ultras' doggy now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a dog that belongs to an octopus. Enjoy the sea. Um, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to your Octo Dad prequel. Yeah. <laughs> Ultras would be a horrible father. Carrie, I don't uncle, disagree. Though. He'd be a really good uncle, though. 
because he's you know <laughs> <What's> <laughs> yaucha, that? seafood soup. <laughs> Gary, you that know, voice, that voice is dangerously close. Sorry, sorry. Well, <laughs> I, we don't know how Ultron speaks. I'm sure he speaks in like a Dissidia or some bullshit, but I've never seen it. Oh, hello, I'm so. the octopus. Hello, hello. Got eight arms to hold you. Hello. Oh, here's my friend you. Typhoon. He's going to do a. What am I? Gary, for the love of fucking God, <laughs> you've got to get away from voice. this powerful New Yorker energy. I just, all I care about is, I ate so much pizza in the last couple of days. I got all New Yorked up. <laughs> it's just, you're desperate to bung. prove that you are the king of Staten Island. I am the actual king of Staten Island. I've got more Staten Island in my whole body than Pete Davidson has in his weird left eye. His beady, buggy little junky eye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the views expressed by Gary Butterfield on this show yeah. are not uh, yeah. reflective of the views of Geo Media or any yeah. of its uh, owned employees. I also knew that he had something to do with drugs, but I didn't know if he was specifically a junkie. So now I feel kind of bad. I just think he I, – I, I would say the same thing about Jim Brewer. Anybody who has eyes like that gets gets the, the junkie Muppet tre- treatment from me. Okay. Anyone who played yeah. Goat Boy. What, man, Anyone Davidson who Boy. should bring back Goat Boy. I would not be surprised. I would be yeah. thrilled. Yeah. Finally, Goat Boy's back. Guess who's back? Goat Boy's back. Phone a friend. Huh, and I feel bad about calling Pete Davidson a junkie. Yeah, he you said it a bunch with... of times. I did. Well, when I said he was a Muppet junkie, I was just thinking of Janice, uh-huh. the, the canonical Muppet junkie. Not kind of canonical. I don't think it's canonical that Janice has, has a Don't be naive powerful... about Dr. Teeth's friend. Okay, but, but, the, that's, um... but that's an implied. That's implied. It is not. Implication is not canonical, Gary. We can discuss that another time. I want to continue to feel bad about. <laughs> well, fuck you too, good sir. Being, being insensitive about actual drug users, which is something I have a lot of sympathy for. I just don't like Pete Davidson. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I was a monster and I let that out. Is it because you wish that you could have had kisses with Ariana Grande? No. I don't even know who that is. Uh, but, really? I, but I do wish. Do you actually um, not know who Ariana Grande is? I could not point her out of a lineup. I know the name. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, uh, well, it's actually because I wanted Judd Apatow to make a, uh, man child movie about me, you know? Okay. Like Gary, uh, uh, I, we are going to talk about that next episode. Okay. You are going to pitch like, me your, we, we are going to workshop Judd your Judd Apatow movie. That'll be fun. Uh, look forward to it, kids. We might forget it. Pete Davidson, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if uh, you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash techvtv. And you can also leave us a rating review, like. Oh, I was going to ask if you wanted to apologize to Pete Davidson's dead 9-11 father. No. Okay. Well, hold on. Like, I didn't say anything about his father. Eh, I mean, you know, by association. All right. I don't know. I don't, why do I have to apologize to his aunts and uncles and shit now? I would love that, actually, Gary. Uh, I, you can leave I a apologize review like just to the aunts. What, buddy? I just apologize to the aunts. That's beautiful. The uncles can go fuck themselves. I imagine they're at least somewhat responsible for his bad sense of humor. You can leave a review like this one, uh, which was left on the Podcast Addict uh, app by Bookcase. Oh, podcast it- Addict can make fun of addiction, but I can't, huh? Gary, it's a, it's a great point that you're making. And definitely more. Let's review. Let's review the app. <laughs> uh, I have to give it five stars because I am following the rules. Gary. Pocket, my dude, stop eating my microphone. Will. Ha, huh, Gary. Have you thought about training your cat like a dog? Gary. Joke that references 90s grunge band. Will. Chortles and segues into a joke about 80s pop culture. Gary. Desperately tries to escape this trap by getting back on topic for the episode. And that was a five-star review from Bookcase 00. Not inaccurate. Not inaccurate. I would say you do more 90s than 80s stuff. I would say so. You know, I try to stay away from anything that can cause me to get parallels drawn between me and John Hughes. Yeah, you don't want that. I really don't. No. Um, would you like, do you like the name John more than you like the name Will? I don't. No. I like my name. No. You still, I thought you didn't like how soft it was. And I, I don't. don't like people. All right. You convinced me, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fast okay. turn, but you convinced me. You just immediately made me so fucking tired. <laughs> 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 like I was doing pretty good and then like all of a sudden all the rush just left my body. <laughs> good night. Uh, good night.